Good morning. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day up here in the mountains, and I love the mountains and the mountain people. And my, my name is Davis. My first name is Davis, and my last name is Zachary. There was an older man here. His name is Charity. He's got a son named Toma, and he has a grandson named Charity, too. And uh, he, uh, he uh, sent down word to me, because he was in the, over 100 years old, and uh, to, that he, he, God had told him that uh, he, I was to help him build a church. I kind of put it off to the side, but the Holy Spirit kept dealing with me. And so finally I saw, saw his son Toma at our clinic, and I asked if he was still alive. He said yes, and it was like on, uh, I think, Christmas Eve day. Uh, and it was on a Thursday, I believe. And I told him I'd come the next Thursday and, and talk to him. I came up here. Uh, he could not walk. He was blind. Uh, he, they had to pick him up to take him outside and set him in the sun some days. And, but uh, a friend of mine had interpreted, he came with me, and he said that he did, did remember me. And uh, I told him that you'd sent word down with your son, Toma, that I was supposed to help you build a, a, a church and help rebuild it or fix it up. And I've looked at the church, and uh, the Lord wants me. He has spoke to me by his spirit that we need to build a church. And so I promised him, I, th I can't, don't know where it was five or six years ago, I promised uh, uh, ch the, 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 the older guy, Charity, that I would do that because God told me to. So I'm still trying to do that. Uh, he died a few days after I told him that. And I think they say he was 110. But uh, we get down here, you don't know because uh, you don't have a birth certificate that much. But he thought he was 110. So I think he was just staying alive till he got news from God that, uh, that it was, his church was going to be fixed or God's church that he was in charge of. He had such a, uh, a passion for his church and his church people that he wanted to make sure it was all right. And uh, there's a lot of this uh, passion that people want to know the truth and that if you have the patience of God that is truth and so that's what's going to bring people to the foot of the cross so I immediately fell in love with this family and uh, I told him that uh, we would do that and we did raise I think uh, $2,500 or maybe even 5000 but uh, it's probably going to cost uh, thirty to 40000 because uh, all the, the, food, uh, the money here has gone up and it's way back here in the mountains, so there's a lot of transportation that's going to have to be done. But uh, I know that God wants to build a church and that I am supposed to be a part of it. So we're doing this, what we're doing right now, uh, to uh, possibly go to churches and show people that we might uh, have. The old church uh, was up the last time I was here, but the rocks are laying all around, and uh, uh, it has fell all the way down. So they built this temporary thing because they have a school here and, uh, 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 and a, a church. They're supposed to have a big, they're going to have a celebration here the, uh, 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 Christmas Eve. And there's usually, call me a moon, Vinny, who, uh, uh, l'église, uh, pour, uh, 24 décembre. En pile, moi. Trois cent, quatre cent, cinq cent. Sanxant Moon, he thinks, comes on that, on that uh, celebration. So you know they can't all fit in this place, but it'll, they'll be all over. They, ha they, they go for about 12 hours, 14 hours singing and worshiping the Lord and praying and dancing. And, uh, and they're all over the place. And then they eat and they feed people. Uh, so it's quite a celebration. I've been to, up here to a couple of them. Uh, God has given me... I went through a spirit of depression. I'll try to make this quick. A spirit of depression, or, you know, whatever, uh, for two and a half years. And uh, this last time I came back to Haiti, my doctors told me not to come. But the first time I set foot in the Haiti airport, God set me free of all the depression. And I, he has given me a new vision and a new purpose for life. And I was ready to do my bucket list. And now I, I can't do that. I've got to do what God wants me to do. So he says, I want you to go into evangelism where we will, we have these four things already planned is uh, uh, crusades, discipleship, 
Christian literature to pass out and conferences to help the church grow and the people in the church. Uh, so I came here 20, uh, two years ago and I did a lot of evangelism and crusades. And then I kind of helped the, uh, the girls and my two daughters and my son's here now with his family and they can take care of all that. They're saving lives in the clinic, in the cholera hospital, in the in, uh, 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 malnourished centers we have and giving out food. Uh, there's, we got 140 some thousand dossiers or charts of people that's been through the clinic. 10, over 10,000 people has been through the cholera hospital. I don't know how many people that the lives has been saved and the people in, in the area we're in, they love us. They will not let anything happen to us and because we have walked out the word of God. We haven't just preached it, but we walked it out. So now all these mountains, some people walk four, six, 12 hours to get to our place. I ask them sometimes, why do you come here? I say, well, it's the only place we can find that we can get help. We're here to help the Haitians. And, and this church will help. There will be evangelism there. We're going to be coming up here with teams, uh, having a preaching and, uh, and uh, showing the Jesus film and, and any way we can do evangelism. We'll have some conferences and invite people from this church to come down to grow in the Lord and pass out to literature. So this is a new vision. And I, and I love it. God, I am so excited about it. Uh, and God has set me free and I have done this and I'm sorry, but I have to say it a little loud. I have a passion that is not normal. I love God so much. He set me free from 22 years of drugs. I was thinking about where to get some cocaine one second, and the next second, I was at the foot of the cross of the blood of Jesus, cleansing me as pure as white as snow. And I saw a vision of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, and I knew if I was the only person on planet Earth, he would have come and died that horrible death. I started to cry. I said, Lord, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do anything you want me to do. But if I'm going to serve you, I want frontline action. I want to be toenail to toenail, eyeball to eyeball with the devil. I tell people, don't pray that unless you mean it. Or you might be standing next to me in Haiti. But this is where he sent me. And I want to bring life, God's life to these people. I want his light to shine for me and from all the people we touch and help. And it's, it's, it's going to cost money. And money does not mean anything to me. But God has already told me for 2016, I'm to be in evangelism and he's going to raise this. <laughs> he's going to raise a million dollars for evangelism. But I'm here today to talk about this little church. And we need to raise that because God told me to. And I just hope that uh, if this gets to anybody about this, that they would be so excited, so happy to be a part of of building a church in Haiti for the people that are, they, they're, they're poor. And for the school that's here, that I know these people preach the word. I've come up here days where they're on a blanket, his dad and him studying the word of God and reading it and praying. These people are real. I've been here for 22 years. I know who's real and who's just, you know, trying to get something. Amen. And I want to help these people. Because they deserve, they've suffered for 200 years and they deserve a benediction, a blessing. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you know of a ministry that we need to know about, please give us a call, 888-641-8606 or take a look at our website, revelationstv.org.